Most mundane events are actually miraculous. Let's imagine that you shuffle a deck of cards, that's 52 cards, and then reveal that they were arranged in this perfect order, by which I mean the Ace of Spades, Two of Spades, Three of Spades, so all the spades through to the King of Spades and the Ace of Diamonds, and then you get to the clubs and then the hearts. The probability of that sequence is 1 over 52 times 1 over 51, etc., because the probability of getting the Ace of Spades first is 1 over 52, because there's 52 cards, so you've got a 1 over 52 chance of selecting the Ace. Having selected the Ace, the probability that the next card is the Two of Spades is 1 over 51, because at that point there's 51 cards remaining, of which of course only one is the Two of Spades, etc., until you get down to the last card, and so because these are considered to be independent events, the probability is just the product of those probabilities, which is 1 over 52 factorial. And that denominator is greater than the number of particles in the universe. So this is an incredibly unlikely event. You would really be completely blown away if a well-shuffled deck of cards produced that exact sequence. But of course, whatever sequence is revealed has exactly the same probability. And it's just as much an unpredictable miracle. Now conversely, many events that people believe are incredible miracles are actually completely mundane and predictable. So here is a news article I found about the South African lottery. So in this particular week, November 2020, the winning numbers drawn were the numbers 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Highly unusual, and it was, seems to be even more unusual that 20 people, that's a large number to get the winning lottery sequence. And so there was this report that was, it was suggested that there would be a, a fraud probe, etc. The question is, how incredible was this event? And was a fraud inquiry really required? Well, there is an incredibly low probability, it turns out it's one in over 42 million, of, again, that particular set of numbers being drawn on that particular day. But that's the same as any particular set of numbers, just as we saw for the deck of cards. And there's nothing unusual about a relatively large number of winners, 20 in this case, picking that set of numbers. In fact, it's known that people are much more likely to pick sequential sequences than completely random ones. And in fact, it's known, for example, in the UK lottery, that the most commonly picked set of numbers is the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In fact, it turns out that there's about a 12% probability that any 10-year period, there would be a set of numbers just like this drawn in a lottery somewhere in the world. So actually, it's not a particularly unusual event. And you can see a full write-up of this in one of my blog posts linked there. Here's another headline from a few years back. A woman in the US wins the jackpot lottery millions for the second time. So this is a multi-million jackpot win twice on separate occasions within the, actually in the space of four years here. Again, how incredible was this? I mean, most people think something strange is going on here, but in fact, like the previous events, this is completely routine and predictable. When they say that the chances of this happen approximately one in 200 billion, what they're referring to is the chance of a specific person winning a six from 49 ball lottery twice, two consecutive attempts. But what we're interested in are the chances, let's say, over a 20-year period that at least one person in the USA will win the lottery jackpot at least twice. It turns out that the answer to that question is probably greater than a half, and you can see that worked out in the book. To give a feel for the probability calculations required to answer these kinds of questions, let's imagine a room filled with 13 people. So there's our 13 people. And we're going to assume that each is assigned a random number from 1 to 100. So that person gets 11, 61, 61. The question is, what's the approximate probability that at least two of them will get the same number? Well, let's calculate that probability. And again, I'm going to use some principles here which you can learn about by watching the primer videos on probability theory. Let A be the event that at least two of the 13 people have the same number. Then we can think about the converse event, which we call not A, 
which is that all 13 have different numbers. Now the reason we want to focus on that is because it's actually easier to calculate the probability of not A than to calculate the probability of A directly. And we know that the probability of A is just 1 minus the probability of not A. So we are going to calculate the probability of not A. Imagine that we're now going to line the people up and we're going to take the first person and look at their number. That person gets the number 11. For not A to happen, the second person has to get a different number to the first person. And the probability that person 2 is different to person 1 must be 99 over 100 because the first person got number 11 and there are 99 numbers other than 11 left that the second person can get for them to be different. So let's suppose they get a different number, 61. Now we go to the third person. What's the probability that that third person has a different number to both persons 1 and 2? Well, that probability must be 98 over 100 because there are 98 numbers left that are different to the numbers 11 and 61. Suppose they get 93, then we ask about the fourth person, and the probability that that person has a different number is again just 97 over 100. And we can go down all the way through now to person 13, and the probability that person 13 has a different number to the previous 12 people is going to be 88 over 100 because that's how many numbers are left which are different to all of the previous 12 numbers chosen. So the probability of not A is just the product of these 12 probabilities because for not A to happen, each of those events has to happen. Person 2 has got to be different to person 1, person 3 has got to be different to person 1 and 2, etc. And so again, we simply multiply that probability by that probability, by that probability, etc., all the way down there. And that gives us that product, and that's 0.47. So that's a probability of just under half, but that's the probability of not A. So the probability of A is 1 minus that, which is 53%. So there's a greater than 50% probability that in a set of 13 people, given numbers from 1 to 100 randomly, at least two will have the same number. And people find that highly counterintuitive. There's one classic example, which is called the birthdays problem, which is the probability that at least two children in a class of 23 have the same birthday.